Hello guys, your favorite living organisms are Barnabas Soro from Top Notch TV. Back to talk about our body systems. Uh, what if we didn't have uh, such organs like the skin? Imagine yourself without the skin. <clears throat> how will you be? And then how important is your skin? Uh, look at your friend, your neighbor, and imagine that person without the skin. Is the skin useful? Is the skin important? Is it for beauty? When you say beauty, it lies in the eyes of the beholder. Can this beauty lie in the eyes of the beholder without the skin? And is the skin only for beauty? So somebody says, uh, sorry ladies, but uh, somebody says, uh, I, 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 I'm looking for a, a tall, dark, handsome guy. Does the skin contribute to the handsomeness? Okay, so let's discuss about the structure of the mammalian skin. Our skin is uh, the largest organ in our body. And our skin plays some key roles. Being the outermost organ, obviously, it will play a, one of the key roles, that is protection. We'll see at some point how it plays that role of protection. Our skin, your skin, also has a role in temperature regulation. That is a role that not all of us, not many of us, uh, take notice of easily, but the skin plays a role in thermal regulation. That is temperature regulation. At the end of this session, by the end of this session, we want to see which structures can we relate with to which function of the skin. You see, one of the key roles of the skin we have mentioned is protection, and that is where we start. In the structure, if we take this model of our skin, the skin has some three key layers that are the outermost layers. The uppermost, which is the outermost part of your skin, the quantified layer. Being the outermost, obviously, it's the one that plays the major role of protection. The cells that form the confide layer are uh, made up of one significant protein called keratin. And they are usually dead. Being dead... They provide protection against mechanical damage and also bacterial inversion. The confide layer, the cells, also reduces the loss of water by evaporation from our skin. Below the confide layer, we have the granular layer. Granular because it's made up of granulated cells. The cells have like granules and they are living cells. They are the ones that lead, give rise to the confined layer. They give rise to the confined layer by being dead and being keratinized. Below the granular layer, you have a major layer also that is the Malpighian layer. Now, the Malpighian layer gives rise to the entire epidermal layer of the skin. That is where the cells are actively dividing. This is the layer that has or comprises of actively dividing cells. 
when we talk of cell division, we realize that it will evolve the process of mitosis. These three layers, that is the quantified layer, the granular layer, and the malpighian layer, they form the epidermal part of the skin, the epidermal layer or the epidermis. And therefore, the malpighian layer, which is the innermost layer of this epidermis, it is the one that can give rise to the entire epidermis. And that is why it is rich with actively dividing cells. Besides that, this is the layer that has cells which have a pigment that we call melanin. We have come across the word melanin a number of times and we, are, uh, we, we take notice that melanin is the pigment that is responsible for our skin pigmentation. And it also plays a role in protection against ultraviolet rays. So sometimes my colleagues say, told me that um, she is uh, rich in melanin and therefore she is more protected from the sun than me. I give credit to that because at least she understood, she, she understood biology by that. Huh? Now, after the three layers which form the epidermis, we have other structures. Let's talk of the blood vessels. The skin as an organ must be supplied with blood that is rich in oxygen and rich in nutrients. The skin as organ with live cells must be having a way by which metabolic wastes and carbon dioxide are removed and that is the role of the blood vessels. So the blood vessels are for the nourishment of our skin cells, but also the blood vessels will have a role in thermoregulation, which we'll see in our next session, thermoregulation, blood cells, sorry, the blood vessels. Besides the blood vessels, we have other obvious structures that emanate from your skin, like Visibly in my skin, I can see the hair. Uh, some of us have uh, are very hairy. Some of us are less hairy. But all in all, as part of the skin structure, we have the hairs. The hair is responsible for both thermoregulation. And we are going to see in the next session what is the role of the hair in thermoregulation. The hair emanates from structure within the skin that we call the hair papilla, which is more like the root of the hair. This hair papilla is a region that has cells that are specialized for hair formation formation of the hair, growth of the hair, and even cycling of the hair. Besides the hair, we have the sebaceous gland. The sebaceous gland, being a gland, it means we can associate it with secretion. What is this that is secreted from the sebaceous gland this and this the sebaceous gland secretes a fluid that we call sebum s e b u m sebum sebum has a key function in protection of the skin against bacteria because it has antiseptic characteristics whose role is for protection of the skin against bacteria. Also, the sebum 
contains an oily substance that is responsible for maintaining the flexibility of your skin. Our skin is flexible. What is responsible for that, making the skin flexible and supple, is the sebum. It is not only the sebaceous glands that are a secretory in our skin. Okay? What happens? During physical exercise, we sweat. And you see, there is structures in the skin responsible for sweating. Which structure is this? These are the sweat glands. Highly coiled structures. Their role is secretion of sweat. What is the role of sweat? We'll see in the next session. The sweat has a role in excretion. It has a role in thermoregulation. How does sweat get out from the skin? The sweat gets out the skin to the skin surface through these tubular ducts that we call the sweat ducts. I've mentioned tubular. Tubular then is a structural adaptation of the sweat ducts. Structural adaptation to direct the sweat from the sweat gland to the skin surface. What is the role of the sweat? Join me in the next session. Notice that the skin also can serve a role of reception. It is possible to detect sharp objects. It is possible to detect heat. It's possible to detect coldness. That is a, the role of the skin in reception. Which structures in the skin are responsible for reception? The main one, it means we have the nerves. What is labeled as the nerve fiber. The nerves contain the nerve cells that are responsible for detecting changes in the external environment. And that is stimulus. Also, underneath the skin, we have the subcutaneous layer. This is part of sometimes what people has uh, de have people debate about, and uh, that is the region of uh, storage of fats. So sometimes we say somebody has a lot of fat in the skin. That fat has a, has a role. The fats that form the subcutaneous layer is responsible for insulation against heat loss. That is the subcutaneous layer. The last structure in the skin that we can't do away with is the erector peel muscle. The erector peel muscle, one, it is a muscle. And this muscle, if we trace, this muscle is attached to somewhere, the hair, one end. And on the other end, it's attached somewhere to the lower part of the Malpighian layer. That is the rectal peel muscle. Being a muscle, it is responsible to undergo contraction and relaxation. And as it undergoes contraction and relaxation, it affects the hair shaft. It is either it makes the hair or the hair shaft firm and straight on the skin surface, or it makes the hair shaft to be flexible and therefore lie over the skin surface. That gives us a precise picture of our mammalian skin. Having understood the structure of our mammalian skin. Join me then in exploring a little bit of how is this skin adapted to the functions that we have mentioned. Remember, some key functions 
that we have mentioned of the mammalian skin it includes protection protection against entry of microorganisms protection against physical damage protection against the harmful effects of ultraviolet rays from the skin actually we call that first line defense primary protection how is the skin adapted to provide protection one remember we mentioned we have the quantified layer that is made up of dead cells responsible for protection against mechanical damage and bacterial invasion two we have the sebaceous glands that secrete sebum which has antiseptic properties and therefore provides protection against pathogens primarily bacteria three we have the malpighian layer that is pigmented the cells have the pigment melanin that is responsible for providing protection against the harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun that is the role of the skin in protection the second role of the skin is irritability in this irritability we mentioned the sense organs the sense cells that are part of the nerves underneath the skin the nerve cells are the ones that detect changes in the environment that is stimuli which can be heat cold pain or even touch the other role of the skin is excretion of salts excess water and some traces of urea how is the skin adapted for excretion of salts sweat where is the sweat secreted from sweat is secreted from the sweat glands that informs us the composition of a sweat it contains excess salts it contains water it can contain traces of urea and that is how the skin plays the role of excretion now the role of the skin in homeostasis which is regulation of body temperature you know what the skin has a key role in temperature regulation and we want to take a few minutes in our next session to explore the functioning of the skin in thermoregulation join me in the next session a few minutes for us to explore specifically the role of the skin your skin and my skin as mammals in thermoregulation as usual guys it has been very nice very enriching interacting with you as always kindly remember as always to subscribe to our enriching channel the ocean of knowledge our youtube channel the top notch online tv series and we are a community of interactive living organisms therefore if you have a comment a question point to add always you are free to type your comment in our comment section feel welcome we treasure you as always top notch guys the ocean of knowledge bye bye